Hi everyone, I'm making this video to show you how I modified a hydraulic bottle jack to work upside down. Before I begin, I want to give you a list of the tools that was necessary to complete this process. First off, a hydraulic bottle jack which is able to be disassembled. What I mean by this is some hydraulic bottle jacks when they're manufactured are welded shut and cannot be assembled on the inside. What you're looking for is a hydraulic bottle jack which uses a large nut at the top to hold it together. Additionally, you will need a container to temporarily store the hydraulic fluid, an adjustable wrench, a vise, a short length of compression fitting 3 16th inch brake line, a hacksaw, tape measure, sandpaper, a paper towel, alcohol wipe, JB Weld Marine Weld or Welder, Q-tips, a plastic shopping bag, and metal spray paint. What I suggest you do is watch this video in its entirety to see the process I was able to do this with, and then if it's something you want to go through with, you'll be able to gather up the tools that are needed. I hope this is helpful and you enjoy doing this as much as I did when I modified my hydraulic bottle jack. So you start first by emptying the hydraulic fluid into your container. If you don't get it all into whatever container you've chosen to use, you will need to buy a bottle of suitable hydraulic fluid to top up this when it's reassembled. I want to let you know that in my hydraulic ball jack there was about three inches worth of threads. It took a lot to unscrew it to get the housing off. So after the housing was lifted off by the handle, the next step was taking the ram out of the center. So that was lifted up. I had to do it slowly but methodically. At the bottom of the ram was a rubber gasket. So that rubber gasket needs to remain intact for this to work when it's put back together. That's all the disassembling I needed to do. If you're going to use an actual welder to join the brake line, you will need to also take off the part that the, that's a pump so that you have a clean area to work with your welder. The first part of this, now that we're inside the hydraulic bottle jack, is to prepare both the brake line and also the inside of the hydraulic bottle jack for the join that's going to take place. So I want to start with the inside of the hydraulic bottle jack. You need to very carefully clean off any residual hydraulic fluid from around the intake hole so that'll be a circle and then I also did the kind of wall in behind it just so that no hydraulic fluid would get mixed with the JB weld as I did the joins. So I started off with a paper towel and then I cleaned it up afterwards with a rubbing alcohol pad, what's normally used 
before giving oneself an injection to clean the area of skin. Now, the break line first needs to be cut to length. So I cut it to the length that was just below the threads in the ram area where, where it came off on screwed when I took the hydraulic bottle jack apart. So maybe the hydraulic bottle jack was eight inches tall and it's about an inch up to the area where the intake is and the threads at the top are two inches you may only need four to five inches of brake line to make this work. I used three sixteenths diameter brake line and then did a careful measurement from the intake hole to just below the threads for when I reassembled the hydraulic bottle jack. So I used my hacksaw to cut the brake line and then I sanded this area right here, the sides, as well as the end so that the JB weld would make a strong bond. As you can see, the brake line is pre-painted, so I wanted to get their paint off so it was metal joining onto the JB weld and having the surface roughed up when I did this from the sandpaper. The next step in doing this is preparing a very small amount of JB Weld, only enough that's going to cover this little end. So you need to have both tubes and then you'll mix them onto a little piece of paper. Um, I used a toothpick when I did this. So I put the little bit of JB Weld on the end of the brake line and then I put it in place like this and I put a little bit of tape around the top just to hold it onto the ram and then it's held in place like this photo shows. So I would suggest that this is all you do for about six hours while this initial bit of JB Weld goes hard. I wanted to verify that this ending area right here had not blocked the inlet for the hydraulic fluid. So what I did was took one of them Bendy Hospital straws, bent it, and I put the end that was bent over the brake line and I blew into it to make sure that the air was getting in, down, and up. Now I must caution you if you're going to do this, put on a pair of safety goggles. I did not and a bit of residual hydraulic fluid literally got right here on my lower eyelid and I had to wash my eye out for about 15 minutes. Save yourself the headache and learn from my experience that you should have goggle protection to ensure this. Okay, um, While it's sitting there, don't be tempted to push or prod it. Just let it sit there and cure so the initial hardness sets in. The next step in this is applying the JB Weld to the sides and also to the base of the hydraulic bottle jack. What I did was cut off the cotton tip of a Q-tip and used it almost like a paintbrush to put the JB Weld on here and the bottle jack. So you'll see from this photo, I actually did it in two steps. I first did the sides and then I stopped. There's about a 20 minute period where JB Weld is still a fluid. So during those 20 minutes, about every third minute, I took a Q-tip and 
made sure that any JB Weld that was starting to sit in where the canister would need to go was removed while it was still a liquid. So I used about six Q-tips about every third minute making a little wall form when the hydraulic fluid got to the edge. After the 20 minute mark I applied the JB Weld to the back side. So again why I did it in two steps was I didn't want to add so much JB Weld that it was just going to flow into where it would stop me from reassembling the hydraulic bottle jack and cause me to need to sand or drill out the hydraulic fluid. I didn't want to change the tolerances of the hydraulic bottle jack itself. So when this is done, I would suggest you give it three to four days to cure and you cure it at room temperature. So the rule of thumb for an epoxy is a cool cure allows the PSI strength to be maximized. If you were to rush this, it will make it, or it, it could compromise the strength. JB Weld, for example, has a fast cure product, but its PSI rating is about half of what the JB Weld Marine Weld I used for this is rated at. So I didn't want to compromise the strength of this join. As I started the final day of curing, I also wanted to protect the exposed end of the brake line with a bit of metal paint just to preserve it and make it last as much as possible. So I took a plastic shopping bag and used it similar to a condom, putting it over the hydraulic bottle jack. And then I poked the bag through the end of the brake line that I had added. So all that was left was the length of brake line inside or outside of the plastic bag. And then I just took my spray can can of trim clad paint and paint it all the way around and then down into the trim and down into the brake line. Now the paint's not going to go all the way down but what it's going to get into is the area here that is back to the original color of the brake line. I'm not particularly saying that this is necessary, but it's one of those little details that for the effort of taking the hydraulic bottle jack apart, to me it was very worthwhile doing. The final step of this is reassembling the hydraulic bottle jack. So I actually built a wooden press to use my hydraulic bottle jack with. So I didn't need to give the hydraulic bottle jack back to my friend to tighten the nut at the top because the weight and strength of the wood was able to do this for me. I do want to tell you how very important it is that the hydraulic bottle jack is sealed up with the same strength and torque that it was used when it was assembled at the factory. As well, you may find it's necessary to top up the hydraulic fluid with any fluid that remains either in your container where it was temporarily stored or also with any of the remaining residual fluid that you removed when preparing for the join on the inside. In the description of this video, I've included a link to a YouTube video I watched 
This particular man used a welder when modifying his hydraulic bottle jack. He was very gracious and answered questions for me, and so I wanted to attribute um, his knowledge and thank him for the help that he gave me while I did this work myself. I really have appreciated it. Thank you for the time that you spent with me today. Bye for now.